This construct free add-on is £10. Is it worth it? Let's find out. I've had my eye on this add-on for a while now. It allows you to take 3D models and import them into Construct Freeze engine. Now, I first saw this tool on Fuzzle CC's channel and he did a deep breakdown of this tool, but mainly from the Blender side. So I've not really seen too much of how this tool works. More recently, however, I've seen a racing game developed by Azim Dream Designer, which looks absolutely incredible. And it just really shows off actually what you can do with these 3D models. And then even more recently, I've seen a pirate game developed by Skoldesta, which I can't actually confirm that uses this tool, but it's using 3D models inside of Construct. And as far as I'm aware, it's the only tool that does that. I'll leave a link to all of these in the description because they are fantastic videos to watch. Now, the way it works is you actually need to create a 3D model in a tool like Blender, or in my case, because I'm not very good at 3D modeling, I've went on to websites like TurboSquid, and I've actually found some 3D models that are free that I like. And then you have to download them as either a GLTF file or a GLB file. Now, in some instances, I've not been able to find these files. So I've just actually put them into Blender and then exported them. So it's a bit of a time pressure there, but it's not too bad. Once you've installed the add-on inside of Construct, you can then have access to a new 3D object. Now it requires you to create a placeholder sprite and we just filled this in with red. But once this is done, you can actually import your 3D model files as a 3D object. At this point, I want to go through some of the issues that I found with this tool. So first of all, when changing to a different 3D object file, maybe you don't want a car anymore, maybe you want to change that for a different car or a tree. The game engine didn't always update even when playing the project. Instead, what I had to do was close and reopen the file, which is a little bit of a pain. Next, I found it takes a second to load the 3D model, not just in the editor, but actually inside of the game, depending on how big the 3D model was. So you might actually need to implement some sort of mini loading screen or some sort of fade in from black transition. So the user doesn't see that sort of 3D pop in that we get. And then some of the 3D models didn't actually load correctly. There were some bits missing from the image. Now this only really happened for any images that had a really high poly count. And the developer does say to stick to objects with a low poly count. And when I did that, I had no issues. But trying to push this tool to an extreme, I found that some models took over a minute to load. And again, once they loaded, there was lots of stuff that was missing from them as well. So Something to take in consideration if you think you're going to load in really, really high quality models, it's not going to happen with this tool, it is low poly only. Now, once you've got your 3D model in, you do get some amazing options that we just don't have at the moment. The main one being full rotation on all three axes. This makes a huge difference as we can do stuff that we couldn't do before, such as ramps. Now, I've not messed around with collision too much, so having a ramp in is one thing that looks like a ramp, but actually a functional ramp, I don't know if that's possible yet but it is a really, really nice option. And you can also scale on all axis as well, which means you can take your image and you can change the size of it in different ways, which is always a nice option to have. Other options I saw is you're able to hide materials and turn on a wire mesh. So these are quite nice. And I managed to find the city import within seconds and was walking around it no problem. Now, because it's a big city, I would have to add collision to each of the buildings afterwards, but you'd have to do this in Blender anyway but you can add sort of simple bounding boxes for just the single models. One of the things that I was not a fan of to begin with, but I sort of got the hang of it quite quickly, is the 3D models don't work correctly with normal behaviors. So I started by adding a car behavior and it was able to move forward and backwards, but it wasn't able to turn. The solution that I found for all of the movement objects is actually create another object that does the moving and then just make the 3D object match its position and match its rotation angle. And that seems to have fixed it quite easily. It did take about five minutes to set up movement for each object, which is a little bit of a pain when it takes just a single click. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. In terms of additional options from the coding size, the main one that I saw huge potential was, was the animation side. You can actually take the animation straight from a tool like Blender and you can play those animations or stop them or put them in different speeds. 
And the example they provided of a fire troll was just so much fun to use and had so much life. And if you were to implement this into a game, it would be hard to think this is construct because you can do stuff that you can never do before inside of 3D constructs. That's really, really great. And the other example they gave was the ability to change materials on the fly. And the demo actually showed you that you can just take sprites inside of construct, give them some color, and you could apply that as a material, which is really, really great. And then the final demo that they actually provided in the files with your £10 was a physics demo. And this works so well. You've got balls and blocks that are able to rotate in the air and bounce off each other. And as far as I'm aware, this is just not possible inside a standard construct. Now, this doesn't use the physics behavior. Instead, actually, it's a JavaScript file they've provided, and then you have to write some JavaScript on top of that. There are no construct blocks you can use to get this working. So I understand that might be a put off, but it was really, really great to see. So there are lots and lots of pros and cons that comes with this tool. I think it's a very, very useful tool. And it's got loads of potential, but so back to the initial question, is it worth that 10 pounds? For most people, the answer is gonna be no. It has a really big learning curve on top of Construct 3D's already quite difficult learning curve. And it also requires a good understanding of 3D models, which is a bit that I was lacking that I found really difficult. And if you're going to that extreme to start learning 3D modeling and start learning some of the coding that might come with it, if you're using the JavaScript and the physics side, then you might be better just moving to an engine like Unity where you get rid of all the restrictions that Construct has with its 3D issues. However, if you are somebody who does enjoy Construct 3D and you enjoy pushing it to the extreme, I've had a lot of fun with this tool and I've seen so much potential, so many ideas go through my head about what I can do with this tool. So if you do enjoy that side of Construct, then yes, this tool is definitely worth picking up. You're going to have a blast playing around with it and you'll probably find that there's so much untapped potential with this tool. But let me know what you think. Do you think this is something you would use with or without that price tag? But until next time, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.